All right. What what a week. <laughs> what can you say? So you have some uh, an interesting insight. Yeah. Um, again, it's a follow on on G seven G twenty. Charles Michel, the head of the European Council, equivalent to president of European Community, uh, visit, visits Beijing today. He arrives today. Well, why um, didn't they just meet at the G20? Because he was there. Well, think about this. We joke about how uh, the G20 should be turned into the Xi 20 because he had 12 heads of state meetings and it was only two days. So 48 hours, 12 meetings, three hours with the U.S., That's hour right. apiece from the other. I, how, I guess there wasn't any room. <laughs> there wasn't like any the... room. In fact, there were others who wanted to have meetings too. and uh, Basically everybody, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 19 of them, <laughs> That's right. what you're saying. That's I, right. I know they had to, had to cancel uh, Sunex. Uh, That's right. Actually, just simply because there was no time. Well, actually, I think it was a little more than that because Sunek, before departure for the G20, announces China is a strategic threat to our country. Well, I, did you... Then why do you want to meet? <laughs> okay, go home. Well, know? no, he, he, he keeps feathering it. Uh, his yeah. most recent speech is that the golden era is over. I think he meant the golden era for... The UK, UK is over. Is over. Yeah. I mean, it, it's now uh, developing into a third world country. But Inflation out of control. It's totally out of control. And then more than that, I think uh, another part is, I didn't realize that more than 60% of the UK's GDP is now service industry. Used to be service industry, service the, the city of London, yeah. the financial center. It's being threatened every day. But Europeans will not use the city anymore. No, I mean, Europe. They've, they've already insisted on uh, moving some of the bond business, the euro bond business, out of the city. And that, that, that seems to be even more. That's and right. 60% of your GDP coming from one source, the city. That's right, uh, financial services. This is why I never understood Brexit. That's right. Yeah. But and why isn't uh, van der Leyen coming? I think uh, this is the first time, okay, it's been van der Leyen and uh, Michelle, they're equivalent for more than a decade, always visited China together. This time, no. Now, I think uh, there are two, two sides to this. One is uh, from the Chinese side. Oh, van der Leyen is absolutely a mouthpiece of US common value. Well, that's the way she's perceived, yes. That's right. And she's that's perceived. what she's, uh, obviously, that's her, the rhetoric. Her, her narrative is always very much a value-based uh, China is a threat. To That's other right. Stuff. More than that, this blackening of China, she's active in pursuing it in terms of so-called human rights, in, in terms of democracy, in terms of Xinjiang, and, and the usual stuff, the like, usual I mean, garbage. With uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle coming, mm -hmm. all right, does, is this signaling what we've seen? The split, kind of, the split between economic absolutely. And, uh, I think I think you're being very kind to say the split between economic you and ideology. I see it as a chasm. I also see it as no longer will the Europeans blindly follow the ideological pitches of the U.S. anymore. Well, but it's not clear she's following it. He's yeah. not. He's not. And we saw that with Germany. That's they right. came over. They went for the gold. That's right. But when they went back, it wasn't exactly. It seems like he made uh, some capitulation to the hard side by saying we don't want uh, the Chinese buying into some of our well, uh, assets. Well, I, I expect this to continue for some time in Europe mm -hmm. because uh, the dichotomy exists. Yeah, but, and, mm -hmm. I, I just want to ask you one question. I mean, the Belt and Road Initiative was mm -hmm. all about getting to Europe as well as uh, other places, Africa, Middle East, That's things right. like that. But Europe was a main prize. Yes. I'm, uh, now, with you know, the, the, we seem to be at this kind of inflection point where either Europe is part of this growing global Eurasian Eurasian uh, global, global south, south yes uh, part of it or it basically sides with the US and finds itself increasingly isolated what does this affect the Belt and Road Initiative well I think the Belt and Road Initiative you start with the Asia mass land mass right which means core 
through the market of China, yeah. followed by ASEAN, which is now over three trillion in GDP, followed by the stands, followed by the Middle East, Africa is already and then there. immediately Africa. But South America is now seems to be an active part oh, of these yes. things, which. You know, you take it from the map, basically it's North America, increasingly not including Mexico, who uh -huh. seems to be going their own way, and then Europe, but even Europe is divided. Europe is very divided. I think uh, Europe has, because of the colonial era plunders and the wealth that's been accumulated, uh, can handle this for a little while, but not for not long. long. Not for long. Yeah, but does this no. mean that uh, you're going to see a shift in the Belt and Road more towards the countries who are favorable and perhaps putting on the back burner any kind of outreach into Europe? I don't think you'll be putting down a back burner because if you notice the G7, uh, the G20 meetings had uh, very positive results with a number of European countries as well. Yeah, uh, so things seem to be tilting. Um, that's right. Yeah. And, then, and it's not just China. It's China at the center of Asia. what is not only Asia. You, South America is not Asia. That's I'm right. sorry. Okay. Global South. Global South. And Global neither South. is Africa. Yeah. So it really is uh, a sea change. S speaking of this, I think uh, just as an example of how the liberal Western democracy is producing incompetence, I, I'm sure you saw the report that uh, the German foreign minister oh, yes. came out and criticized that China and, South and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia are rich members of the G77 and that should not be participating. But, I mean, but this colonial area, uh, era divide and conquer, yeah. I, does that work anymore? But it's, it's worse than that because China was never and still is not a member of the G77. <laughs> well, you were secretary of the I G77. I was secretary of the G77 I think you know. for you, a long You remember time. there was a China part of it. How can you have a foreign minister not knowing some of the very basics of foreign affairs it and come up with stupidity? It was leadership, like credibility yeah. issues. I, I, I'm finding it increasingly competence. hard. Basic competence. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's politics. He was yeah. put in there because he's a member of the Greens. I don't know yeah. why the Greens would want foreign policy, but uh, apparently that's where the, what they got. But Ideological. Let, let's let's talk ideology and, and leadership deficits. Morrison. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wanted to run the whole government single-handedly. What was it? He 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 wanted. He was. Uh, he set himself secretly as the. Alt as equal minister for six, six, <laughs> six secret appointments. Everything from uh, health, health, finance, <laughs> treasury, treasury, home affairs, resources. And he had another one he had an eye on. <laughs> and now he's being censured. I, I, I think he is. But here's a guy who was regularly talking about autocracy, his desire for power. That's right. How Western values are so different from everyone else's values. Our great democracy. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, I, <clears throat> it, just, it, it doesn't seem to square. Now, obviously, he, he was uh, pushed out uh, yeah. by the electorate, but I mean, how did he get in uh, with this kind of mindset? And did this for two and a half years. Well, as he said, it was a miracle. I don't, I don't know for whom, though. <laughs> it was a miracle that uh, the electorate did not pick up on this. Well, now they have, yeah. and I, I, I think only there's a resounding raspberry, as they say, yeah. uh, given to him and his ilk. Oh, coming back to Australia, I think it was really quite interesting what happened at the G20, the meeting between the new Albanese and, uh, and uh, President Xi. Yeah. Half hour. Half, a, half an hour, but there's never been, not there's never, there used to be, but for the last three or four years, there has not been an instance in which the Prime Minister of Australia actually talk about how important trade with China is. Well, obviously it's sea change. I mean, we're it's heading into change. tough times yeah. and I think there's, there's this practicality that's coming yeah. in. And you can see that uh, in Britain, they're saying, oh yes, we're gonna support Ukraine, but other people are grumbling. 
but not a blank check. Yeah. And you hear that in, in almost all of Europe right now mm -hmm. um, coming up. So uh, it's going to be, as all we said, you, hard winter. Uh, all of Europe coming up. And it's interesting also that even though people may be reticent in saying it, but the behavior of the U.S. is really becoming so outrageous in terms of protectionism. Well, there, there was an in article. In terms of subsidies. There was an article I just read, mm -hmm. and they were talking about the, the realities uh, mm -hmm. for Europe, which is, you know, it has a war on its doorstep that it didn't want. Yeah. It is now not able uh, to be a manufacturing hub. That's uh, right. And it's, you know, and they're, they're facing incredible inflation and a global downturn and a recession. That's right. Possibly a depression. That's right. And they're suddenly waking up and said, well, wait a second. The U.S. is selling us natural, uh, liquefied natural gas at four times the price of the, the gas domestic, the price. domestic price in the U.S. Yeah. So at some point they, they say, well, if you're our friend, um, you're certainly not showing it. And you, you, you had a statement by Macron a long back. Yeah. That, you know, the, friendliness is not defined by taking advantage of us. That's right. Speaking of taking advantage of us, uh, the Europeans can see this very clearly. For example, what the U.S. has done also in terms of LNG is to use their long reach and military dominance to take over Australia's LNG business. Well, that's fine, but you know the latest news on the LNG is that Qatar uh -huh. just signed a, a, what two billion ton two million tons a, a year of LNG uh, going to uh, Ger Europe to Germany, Germany principally. Yeah. But aside from that. Also, uh, for the Koreans, right? U.S. is now basically blocking the Koreans' entire battery-operated vehicles, you know, electric vehicles, well, not, not only and Korea, chips. Not only Korea, but it's also, also Europe. Europe. Yes. Actually, entire world. That's right. And even within the U.S., there aren't any current car companies that would be qualified for this exemption. So, I mean, for a subsidy. So it, it just kind of begs the question, how far is the U.S. willing to go in America first? Uh, is it beggar thy neighbor and, thy, and your friends and your allies? That's right. It, it, it doesn't seem sustainable. And then the question is, how long will the Europeans really put up with this? Because they're now talking about, Macron is talking about the possibility of a massive European program to subsidize their industries. Yeah, but the, all that does is take away, it, it doesn't increase the amount. It doesn't. And right now you have a shortage of natural gas. So that's, that's not going to change anything. Yeah. All you do is take more natural gas away from developing countries that's right. who are really already being hit by all the cancellations. Yeah. People are taking the penalties, uh, canceling their contracts with uh, the developing world, pay, paying the penalty. That's but right. now they can't replace it at the cost that they had. So, I mean, this, this, is, this is really going... Biden came in and he talked about diplomacy and how things were going to change. And yet, his policies are exactly a mirror image of Donald Trump's. So is this, is this the path forward for the United States? I think uh, this is a path forward in the following sense. The core hegemony attempt at maintaining hegemony will not change. Now, what happened with Biden is that he put up a big show with the allies to say that you are my ally, I'm going yeah, to take he, care of you. Yeah, but he, Where he, Donald he, Trump yeah. didn't do that. That's the only difference. That's the only Some, difference. The, 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 In the, substance, it's the same. But yeah. then you have Europeans, ah, oh, America is back. How wonderful, how nice. Well, he did rejoin the Paris Climate Accord. That's right, that, he that joined the Paris. But he, has, he hasn't fixed the, uh, or returned to the status quo of the JCPOA, the- uh, uh, Lots of other things. And a lot of other things. That's right, so, but- But, but this, this means that if you, it doesn't matter if you have a Democrat or a Republican. You, you see this America first, which is beggar thy neighbor and thy allies, as well as attacking your quote, competitors. That's right. And then the other part is actually either it's hidden in a soft face or a harsh Trump face, the hegemonistic approach 
of pushing and dominating, dominating others continues. I just wonder how long will that last? Can talk, that last? How about domineering personalities? Elon Musk. Oh. All right. Just a quick. I think he tanks uh, midpoint next year in the summer of 2023. I think he either sells or walks away from Twitter. From, from Twitter. I mean, what a disaster. <laughs> and here's the guy who says, you know, freedom of speech. I'm an absolutist freedom of speech. But if you criticize me, you're dead. That's <laughs> you're <right>. out. <laughs> Gotta get you. <laughs> Gotta get you. You know, when people made fun of him and were spoofing um, his what things, he, he said, oh, we have to stop all this. What is it? Half of the ad advertisers have already left him. Uh, it's more than Twitter. that. Uh, more they, than they, that. There's been a, basically a moratorium uh, that's going on. He still has some. Uh, but, you know, this, this is going to be a stampede out the door. Every day he has some sort of new controversy, uh, bringing Donald Trump back. Um, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. What, what do you say about a guy who's bringing back a guy who just had dinner with two anti-Semitics? Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, he exclaims like, well, I didn't know about the other guy. Well, you did know about the yeah. crazy guy named Yi, or That's how renamed himself. Uh, who was uttering all these things? You couldn't have missed that. You're you're consume all this stuff, and he just he, he's trying to you know like you know oh this should be water off a duck's back. He he seems to feel like he's Donald Trump before the last election, but not the previous one when Donald Trump won. I know, but he's not an outsider anymore. He's he can't not. claim. I mean, and this aligning with the the you know the alt right. Uh, racist, yeah, just fascist, fascist stuff. I mean, is, is desperation or not? Yeah, yeah. We'll see. All right, we got to talk about it. COVID nineteen in China. Yes, they have put out a new policy, not new policy, new guidance. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed immediately is they're going to be concentrating on vaccines. We've talked about this That's before, right. especially for the elderly. But I think it's going to be more than that. I think, uh, from what I've heard, they want 60% of the people to have had a booster or uh, been uh, vaccinated within the previous six months. Yeah. And that will open the door to perhaps relaxing. Uh, yeah. things. Still zero COVID policy is what they're going to call it. But, you know, the reason that there are cases that we see today is because China was opening up. It That's was right. tinkering That's with... Right. It's zero COVID, uh, long, long periods of shutdowns and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think China's moving in that direction. And, Especially uh, since some of the new numbers that's coming out are very impressive. Well, deaths are way, way down. Yeah. Way, way, way down. Deaths are way, way down. And uh, also, I think non-symptomatic cases, our numbers are really up. So you actually have people who are not being but, affected. But Charles, you know, I, I wonder, you know, Japan, second largest, I mean, third largest economy on earth. They have 60,000 cases a day. They have over 100 deaths a day. No one is willing to talk about that. And I'm not saying that it's, yeah. it's a bad issue. I'm just saying that China has two thirds of that, yeah. right? And they've had, what, you know, three or four deaths over the last yeah. week. That's right. Uh, not 100 a day. And yet, uh, you, when you, you see the international media, it's China, China, China. Uh, they keep saying that this is, uh, once again, China is over, <laughs> you know, all this kind of stuff. You know, sitting here in Beijing, I, I, I just, I cannot understand, you know, the difference between the rhetoric I hear and the reality that I live in. That's right. And I think once things open up, once there's more visits from people from both sides, Europe in here, I think people will get to see it again. I hope so. I really do. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and one of the things that's interesting to me is China's been approaching this on a people basis. They're, they're right. valuing lives, they're trying yeah. to save lives. And the rhetoric I hear overseas is this is all about economics. China is, you know, the, the same China that they criticize every day in, 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 in Europe and and the United States in particular, now they're saying China has a responsibility to the rest of the world. Well, you accuse China of being the worst state actor in the world, and then you say, yeah, but they should be responsible. They should help us when we need it. We need China's economy. That's right. 
to be part of the global <clears throat> growth. But at the same time, we're, we're trying to undercut it by not allowing them to have chips, you know, the other, investments. The other part, which is really, a, a really ridiculous, is to say that, okay, the zero COVID policy is stupid, it's very destructive, and it harms freedom and individual freedom and democracy. At the other, on the other hand, oh, zero COVID policy is bringing China's economy to its heels. So, <laughs> I I don't understand <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I mean, the hypocrisy, but I don't know how they can not have any kind of circumspection yeah. where they can look at what they're saying and see the you know. <laughs> It just doesn't make sense. Doesn't it's make hypocritical. Sense. Yeah, it is. And yet, you know, they can switch smoothly back and <laughs> forth between criticizing China and saying China has to solve the world's problems. Three things Ukraine here. Or That's North right. Korea. Ukraine, North Korea. Uh, Global no. debt. That's right. I think there are three things here. Number one is I'm really depressed by the level of sophistication of Americans and Europeans because the developing countries seem to still think of China as a very positive force on the, on the world, the global south. That's one. And number two is in the, in the West, politicians are using China as a way of diverting attention from their own domestic incompetence in governing. Well, that's clear. I, 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 yeah. I, I've been saying this lately. That's right. What the West most fears about a, the rise of the Global South and Central Asia is that they would do to Europe and America what Europe and America did, did to them. them. And there's no indication mm -hmm. that that is uh, the design. This is not the Global South using military methods or claiming, no. you know, When's the last time somebody from Africa went to England and put a flag down and says, I claim this in the, you know, in the name of the queen, in the name of our queen <laughs> uh, of Ghana. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And by the way, you're all you all belong to us now yeah. and we're going to take a few slaves and we're going to change some things and we're going to take your money and things like that. 